G'day guys, welcome to Shanky Garage. So in this episode of the HX1 Tonne of Build, we're going to install a billet steering column and then also a ratchet style shifter to suit a shift kitted transmission. So we'll jump straight into the video and hope you enjoy. Okay, in this episode of the HX1 Tonne of Build, we're going to get back into the interior. Now in the last episode, got the seats mounted in. I've still got to finish off the passenger side seat, get that dropped down and mounted in there. But for the most part, the driver's side seat is all bolted in, uh, in position where I want it. So I can now start fitting other bits and pieces and getting all the interior finished off, ready for the motor trimmers for the start of next month. So I mentioned in the last episode, it's booked in for the motor trimmers. So yeah, just got various uh, bits and pieces to finish off uh, for, for the motor trimmer. So one of them jobs is to fit up the shifter. Now I ordered a new one online. So this is a pistol ratchet from Aeroflow. So bang shift style shifter. So I'll open this up in a second. Excited to have a look at that. Uh, got a Pioneer double DIN unit as well. So a multimedia player. So these things are actually quite hard to get at the moment due to the global chip shortage. So I'm sure everyone's aware of the chip shortage um, at the moment but managed to yeah get one online so I need to fit that up into the custom dash around got all the billet buttons as well to fit up uh, got the um, billet steering column as well to fit up now I opened this up in a previous episode but yeah excited to get that billet steering column fitted up as well so just got yeah various little bits and pieces to um, to do in this episode. I wasn't really sure exactly what I was going to do this episode, but I think it's just going to be um, bits and pieces. We'll just see where it sort of uh, takes us with this episode. <laughs> Okay, so this is the shifter from Aeroflow and I opted for the black with the pistol grip. And yeah, it feels really good in the hand. It feels nice, solid. It's good uh, operation, nice and smooth, nice finish on it. So I think this is gonna be a good thing. Not so sure how it's gonna perform, but I guess, um, yeah, we'll just have to see over time. But with most Aeroflow products, they're really good quality. So I'm sure this uh, shifter is um, gonna be a good thing. But yeah, the kit comes with everything you need to fit the shifter. So you get the shifter itself, the cable, uh, various brackets to suit different types of transmissions, uh, mounting hardware, other bits and pieces, uh, grommets, you get instructions, you get the different templates uh, to change the uh, pattern. Um, and the kit that I ordered is for a trimatic or to suit the trimatic, so it comes with a extra uh, a couple of brackets here to suit the Trimatic on the driver's side. And I ordered this kit from Tough Car Parts and I've got an eBay store. So I'll put a link in the description uh, for the eBay link where I ordered this from. Now you probably notice this box of the b and Pro Ratchet. Now I bought this one about 12 years ago when I first started the build. And obviously with this uh, build 2.0, things have kind of escalated and to keep with the uh, the black theme with the, the rest of the car. I opted for a sort of more modern style shifter with the, um, the black finish. So I'm gonna get rid of this uh, Pro Ratchet. So it's brand new, it's never been used. It's just been sitting around for 12 years. So if anyone is after a um, b and Pro Ratchet, then yeah, let me know or reach out to me. Still got all the, um, the mounting hardware and bits and the instructions. Um, and the cable is already on the car, but I'll take that off and that can go with the uh, ratchet as well. So yeah, hit me, hit me up if you're after a pro ratchet. Okay, I think the first thing I'm gonna do is mount this billet steering column from Billetworks. And once that's mounted, I can then adjust the seat and then I can mount this in afterwards to kind of suit to get it in the most uh, sort of comfortable position once you're sort of, yeah, in the chair and holding the steering wheel. So this billet column, it's pretty much just a bolt-in unit. The only thing you need to reuse from the old column is this uh, mounting bracket here. So you just undo these bolts and then there, this just bolts straight to here and then it can yeah, bolt straight into the car. 
It's got the spline down here, so the uni joints from the rack and pinion kit will spline straight up. And it comes with the uh, boss kit already on the column, so yeah, the, the steering wheel just yeah, mounts straight up to there. So yeah, we'll get this uh, bolted in. Okay, I've got that billet steering column bolted in there and there's plenty of clearance there for the digital dash. I had to get them to put a taper on this section here. I think this came out all the way to about there uh, parallel, but yeah, they've put this taper in for me to give me clearance for the digital dash. So thanks to Billet Works for doing that for me. So I'm just using the old steering wheel as a bit of a guide. I've actually ordered a new one from Billet Specialties in the state. So that should hopefully be here in a couple weeks. It's a uh, black one to kind of suit the shifter. And I've ordered some um, billet uh, window winders and billet door openers as well, all in the black. So sort of gonna go with that brown and black theme all in the cab. But anyway, I think um, all that is sitting all pretty good. That shifter, I ended up, um, I'm gonna sort of mount it roughly on a bit of an angle just to make it a little bit more comfortable. So I'll start making up the uh, mount for that now. Okay, I've just made up this base for the shifter. So I've just made it out a 2.5 mil alloy sheet and then put some nut certs into the cabin here. So yeah, then bolts screw directly into the nut certs. So now I can uh, put some more nut certs in there for the shifter to mount to that. Okay, that shifter is mounted. I've just pulled the side covers off and it gives you access to the mounting holes. So there's two on each side. So I just sat the shifter in position where I want it. I've turned it slightly on an angle. Just feels a lot more comfortable on a slight angle. And then yeah, mark the holes, drill them out and I've nut it into the alloy. Just so yeah, it just makes it a lot easier to remove the shifter. You don't have to get anyone underneath and hold the spanner. Bloody good invention, the old nut certs. Um, and then also what I've done is I've just put a spacer in between here just to lift the shifter up slightly so it clears um, these bolts here. Just the housing um, will yeah, hit there if you don't sort of lift it up. So yeah, anyway, I think that's turned out pretty good. Now the next step is to install the shifter cable and the brackets. Now, as mentioned before, I had the B&M Pro Ratchet that I installed onto the car many, many years ago, and the cable and all the brackets are still attached to the transmission. And I was looking underneath and they're all literally the same. So the brackets that are already on there is the same as these. So there's no point uh, replacing that. And the uh, cable is literally the same as well. So the only difference is it's red and not black. So I'm just gonna yeah, leave the cable and the, the brackets already on there and just reuse them. They're obviously brand new, but just 12 years old. So I just don't see the point of um, pulling them off and fitting these ones. It's got that shifter cable ran and I just used an inch and a half uh, hole saw for the grommet hole there. And it says to measure out from this point here, so the base of the shifter, 76 mil, and then mark it, and then that's where your hole saw is. Uh, but because this is sitting up high, it's not flush mount with the trans tunnel. Um, I had to come back a little bit, but what I done is I just got a punch and then put through that hole and then kind of just marked it um, where that sort of punch ends up on the tunnel there. So that worked out pretty good. Okay, so it's a little bit hard to film under here, but that's just how the brackets go for the cable and the selector. Now, don't mind the transmission pan here. I'm gonna replace that or paint it once I drive the car around for a little bit. I'll drop the oil and, and uh, paint that then. And um, 
I've just got that cable. It just loops around the transmission. So it just comes into the top of the trans tunnel and then sort of loops around. So you want it to be a nice gradual loop, no sort of sharp kinks in it or anything. Now to adjust the cable, you pretty much leave this pin out. So you leave the cable out from this bracket here and you put the transmission into the park position. So you just pull this lever all the way forward. So it's in the park position. And then with the uh, shifter, you put that into the park position, come back down and then make sure that the uh, pin, uh, this pin here lines up with the hole on this bracket here. And to get that roughly in the right position, you can either adjust it from here with this thread or you got some finer adjustment here with the actual pin that um, threads in and out so you can do the final or fine adjustment there. So yeah, you get that lined up so it's nice and free, put it in the hole and then you just kind of work each position. So you move it from park to neutral, oh, no sorry, park to reverse is the next position. You come back down, check it, make sure that pin's nice and loose and then go back up, move it to the next position, which will be uh, neutral and then come back down, check to make sure that that pin is free. So you just keep working or keep checking every position to make sure it's free. So it can be a little bit of a trial and error, error to, to get it adjusted right, but um, yeah, it does, uh, it does really need to be adjusted right, otherwise you're gonna have issues um, when you're trying to select gears, obviously. Okay, so that is the shifter all mounted, the cable ran and adjusted. I'll probably put a bit of heat sleeve over the cable just to protect it from the exhaust. And there's a couple of micro switches on this side to wire in as well when it comes time to wiring. You've got your reverse lights and then you're also your neutral cutout switch as well just so you can't start it when it's in gear. Um, but for the most part, I can probably put all this back together, select a pattern um, decal here. Now with the Trimatic, it's three speed. This one's fully manualized, so there's no drive as such. It's pretty much just first, second, uh, third gear, neutral, reverse and park. But yeah, I'll use this one. This is pretty much the closest one out of all these. Um, you can obviously run reverse pattern as well. Um, but yeah, mine's just your standard um, pattern. I'm kind of running out of big jobs to do with this build, apart from the tray and probably the wiring. A lot of the jobs left to do now are just, yeah, a lot of smaller little jobs. And I do try and make each episode about one particular job, but because I'm running out of big jobs to do, I'm gonna have to try and uh, cram in a heap of little jobs into the one episode. So moving forward, I think that's probably what I'm gonna have to do to keep the content coming. And if you guys wanna watch it, so apologies if the episodes are sort of yeah, not super exciting. I'll try and make them um, exciting as I can by, you know, putting various different bits and pieces while I finish this build off. But what I have found is that the list at the start of the build, I made up a big list of all the jobs and they're all sort of big jobs. Um, and yeah, ticking, going through, ticking them off. But now that I've found, once you get to the back end of the build, you encounter heaps of little jobs. And my big list of jobs is getting smaller, which is awesome but then the little jobs are just kind of getting longer. So yeah, the list is getting longer with little jobs and all these jobs are really time consuming. There's just a lot of little jobs that just, in, uh, just involve like sourcing parts or little bits and pieces. Like you might need a couple of bolts or something like that to finish it off. So you need to go down to the bolt supply store and get bolts, which obviously takes time to drive there. And, it's just, yeah, a lot of these little jobs is just kind of frustrating and um, just takes up a lot of time. But anyway, that's just a part of uh, building a car, I guess. So if you want to help support the channel, head over to the Shanky Garage merch store. I'll put a link in the show notes below. So there's t-shirts, hoodies, mugs, yeah, various products. So yeah, click on the link. That'll take you to merch store. Also, leave a comment in the comment section if you have any questions on the build or thoughts or anything. I do try my best to answer all the comments. It might take me a few days to respond, but I do try and answer all the comments. Um, and yeah, if you are new to the channel as well, I highly recommend watching this playlist from the very first episode all, to, all the way to the latest. So I'll put a card up in this corner. 
click on the card, it's all in order, so watch it in order from first episode to latest. Um, like and subscribe as always, bell notifications to give you alerts on when a new video comes out. And uh, I guess we'll leave it at that and we'll see you next time on Shanky Garage. Cheers.